What's good guys, I'm John the Chief, and for this video, it's gonna be the complete walkthrough of Vault 94 Dead in the Water Raid. Guys, this was a lot of fun, and I was able to solo it, so I'm gonna teach all of you guys how to run through this. So, first off, when you start it up, you're just gonna wanna run past all the enemies and go into this big room right here that needs the big red button to be pushed. Once you do that, you're going to have to repair the pipes. Now this is something that we've seen before. Yes, it is from the silo. What you have to do is just run around the whole entire perimeter of this room and you will be able to repair all the pipes easily. There's only one problem and it is the amount of Mirelurks and the ghouls chasing after you and the Mirelurk queens that sit in the center of the room. So, in order to deal with that, I actually just run past it. They will not hit you and do that much damage if you just keep running away from them. So, usually I'm just running away, repairing all the pipes, because that is the only objective. You are not required to kill the ghouls or the Mirelur Queens. So, as long as you repair the pipes until it is done, you are good to go on to part 2 of the raid. This is the easiest part, it is probably the little tutorial trying to get you into the mood because repairing pipes is actually part of every single section of this raid which consists of 4 sections total. Now while we are still talking about the first section, I'm going to give you guys some pointers. Number one, you want to be running Exterminator. It is a perception perk which allows you to ignore 75% of insects and Mirelurks armor. Which means that the Mirelurks that you encounter throughout this raid, you are ignoring 75% of their armor. Which is so useful. It makes it so you're basically dealing full damage on your weapons all the time. It is great. Have to run that perk. Second thing, clearing out the pipes of each section is really important because one thing that we notice is that when you clear out the pipes and then start finishing off the enemies, they will stop respawning. So if you are playing on novice difficulty and you just want to complete it to get the Vault 94 steals, you can just clear out the pipes then clear out the enemies and then take your time with each of the puzzles without having to worry about any of the enemies actually killing you. You can do it one by one systematically, clear out the pipes, clear out the enemies, and then you go and do the puzzles. Now, after you are done with the atrium section, you are going to go into the residential area. Now, this area is actually really simple. You're going to want to look for three rooms in the area to get to them is a little bit confusing, so you kind of have to just learn the area, especially if you want to be able to do this in regular or expert difficulty. You want to just kind of map out where everything is. I learned that the workroom and the entrance to the council area is to the north, and I base everything around that. So the north side is where I go to immediately all the time. Now, you're going to want to go and master where these three specific rooms are. The nursery room, the work room, and also the council room. Because you need to access all three of these rooms in order to get the engineer maintenance card. How you do that is by finding the key to the first of these three rooms. Once you have the key to the first of these three rooms, or you actually find out which room can be pick locked with pick lock 3, you go inside and you'll find the key to the next room. So you can start off getting the workroom key, like me, you go into the workroom and you, then you're gonna get the council room key. So you go to the council room and then in there you're gonna get the nursery room key. So again, you will end up going through all three rooms no matter what because you always need the key to get to the next room. And then, in the third room, there will always be the engineer card that you need in order to get into the engineer room. So, once you have that, you can clear out all the pipes, go to the engineer room, which again, the entrance is easiest if you go through the north end. That is where I always go. The north end 
has the best areas to go through when actually navigating through the residential area, that's where you want to deal. Once you are inside the engineer room, you'll find the passcode actually in any of these areas. It's usually on the bookshelf, but it's always in this room. So you never actually have to equip Hacker 3 in order to actually get into it. Also, you can get some free caps while in the room. And once you download the codes for this and you have the pipes fully drained, a one-star legendary enemy will spawn in and you can complete the second part of the raid, which is the halfway mark. This is where you start to get your first bit of loot for it. And so get excited, guys. You're basically halfway through the raid. But these first two sections are stupidly easy compared to the next two. So guys, brace yourself for it. Make sure you are stacked on Radaways and stim packs, because you guys are going to need them. So then you are in the engineering wing for part three of the raid. Now, this one is actually pretty difficult. So what I recommend doing if it's your first time going through and you're on novice difficulty, which you should be if you're watching a tutorial for how to beat the raid, you are going to want to take your time. So you start off with repairing all the pipes you can, finish the draining, then clear out all the enemies in the room so that way you have a lot of free space to go through every place in this area because there is a lot of stuff that you have to get ready for. Now before you restart the reactor, take your time to loot the whole entire area including every single room because you're going to want to collect at least two reactor catalyst canisters, two reactor control cards, a couple of mainframe cores, and then four reactor interlock keys. Now, the reactor interlock keys is usually what messes me up, but is actually not that difficult to have all four. You just need to look very thoroughly because they are pretty hidden most of the time. And also, if you do get that section and you do not have all four keys, you might be a little bit screwed because you only have three minutes to find all four. So make sure you collect everything you need before you start the reactor. Now, when you restart the reactor, there is a total of six steps. The last step is just pressing the emergency restart button. So you don't need to worry about it. And then there's a the prior five steps. These five steps could be out of any of these eight possible challenges. You can authenticate with hand scanners, which is just going to be going to each of the six hand scanners located throughout the room and just pressing E on them in order to activate them, scan your hand, you are done. It is one of the easiest ones they have. For the second task that you can have is replace the reactor catalyst canisters. Just remember, you're going to have these already collected prior to restarting the reactor. So you should have them all ready in your inventory. You can go directly to the machines and insert your reactor catalyst canisters. For step number three that you could have, use the reactor control cards. This is super easy. Just swipe your card in each of these locations. There's two in the center and then two up top from where you started off from. It is very simple. You don't even have to try. For step number four is open the reactor fluid valves. For this, you just go to the bottom area of the engineering wing and then you just go in a complete circle and just hit E on every single valve that you see. Sometimes it's marked depending on how buggy your game is. My thing doesn't usually mark it, but that is all you have to do. Just Go activate it once. If you activate it twice, it actually undoes your progress. So make sure you look at the outskirts of the circle and just keep hitting each valve only once. And then on the last one, you should be good to go. There is a little bit of delay because it finishes when the last valve finishes turning, which it has to rotate a few times. For step number five, is replace the damaged mainframe cores. 
which again, super easy. There's like five mainframe cores that you have to replace. And also you can repair them by going into the mainframe room, going to the crafting workbench, and then you can just use a tinker, repair all the mainframe cores, and then you can go back and replace them. Super easy, but they also have multiple mainframe cores lying throughout the engineering wing. So you can actually do it that way and make it easier. You don't need to spend your circuits and your steel scrap in order to repair it. You can collect them prior to doing this. But if you're in a rush and you're doing this in standard or expert difficulty, I recommend using the Tinkerer's Workbench in the mainframe room. For the next one is engage the reactor interlocks. You just need to insert the four keys that I told you to get earlier and then you will be done with this. It is super simple at the very middle of the room in the water you just... So for step number seven it is restart the reactor subsystems. Now this one is a pain in the butt because you have to memorize where each of the buttons are in each of the rooms and which one does what. Where the east generator room is, where the processing room is, the everything. You need to actually memorize this so that way you can activate it. Once you get that, it'll give you the steps for which one to activate and what order once you have it all mapped down, it is super easy, but it's kind of just you learn on the job. You just need to memorize where each of the buttons are in each of the rooms, and then you activate it depending on what it actually calls for. There should only be like six or seven tasks for this, but I only got this one once out of the three times that I beat the raid so far, so it's not a very common task for you to get. For the last step, it is adjust the circuit breakers, which is super easy. You need to go to each of the circuit breaker boards and just make sure each of them are in the down position besides the four numbers that they call out. Now, these four numbers change each time and you can't have it preset before you actually start the reactor. So suppose you actually uh, messed up the restarting the reactor and you want to have it preset so you can skip this step. No, it doesn't work that way. It changes, they constantly flip, so you have to wait till the step is and they call out the numbers each time, so that way you can go and get And then, once you complete five of these steps, you are gonna have the sixth step, which is press the emergency restart button, and then you're done with part three, which this one was a pain in the butt for me to get because I feel like the Restarting the reactor subsystem is a little glitchy and also when you engage the reactor interlock keys that you collect beforehand, if you do not have enough when you insert them, I think they just eat up the keys and you can't get them again because I looked all over the place and I couldn't find those keys again once I used them during that step and then failed later. So that's why you have to be careful with this one. I feel like it's a little bit buggy, but I'm not totally sure yet. Maybe I'm just blind and couldn't find any more reactor interlock keys. Anyways, once you do that, you're on to number four, the last part of this entire raid. And also, you get a nice little two-star enemy to spawn in, so get your two-star weapon that unfortunately will uh, be actually a one-star because Bethesda likes to give you one-stars for two-stars. Now, for phase four of the raid, guys, what you have to do is head to the pump control station in the utility and agricultural wing. You just have to repair the pipes again, but unfortunately, the enemies just keep respawning in this area. You don't get to take it easy. I haven't been able to, and it was really frustrating. A trick is using sneak and stealth boys in order to actually be able to read the codes. Because what you have to do is that once you are in the pump control station, you're gonna need to read the code and insert that into each of the proper areas. So. Remember in part 2 where you downloaded those codes from the engineer room? Yes, you're gonna need to use that in order to actually activate the last part. Once you read the code, insert it in each of the areas Alpha, Beta, Gamma, and Delta, 
you are going to be on the last part, which is defeating the Strangler Heart. To defeat the Strangler Heart, you are going to need to kill a bunch of the enemies that are around you, and then the heart will open up randomly once a couple of the enemies are killed in front of it. Once you do that, you have to shoot it for as long as you can, because once it goes through a short period without taking damage, what I notice is that's when the heart closes. And you don't really get much time, because if you don't shoot at it right away, it just ends up closing right away, and you can't really do much with it. I tried to do different methods of cheesing the Strangler Heart because I'm in solo, but nothing really works, so I ended up just brute forcing it, and then as soon as I saw it open, I just unloaded my either anti-armor explosive handmade or my bloodied 50 cal in order to try and get as much damage as possible until usually my born survivor activated where I needed to get my health regen back up or something else occurred because that is going to put you in the danger zone. There isn't really any vantage point that I saw where you are immune to the enemies around you where you can still hit the strangler heart. There was one location to the left of it that was floating up top if you marsupial jump to there. But even then, I noticed that the Mirelurk Kings were able to release their sonic wave to damage you and also poison you from a far distance away. Which, if you haven't played the raid yet, the poison damage that the Mirelurks do is the bulk of the damage that they'll be dealing to you. That thing shreds your health bar no matter what. Whether you're in power armor, you're running a bloody build, whether you're running exterminator armor, it's the poison that they deal to you that really incinerate your health. So you have to be ready for that. And then, once you defeat the Strangler Heart, which was probably the hardest part of the raid in my opinion, after you complete it the first time, this is the one that will give you trouble, which it should be. It's the final part, it's supposed to be the boss of the vault. You're gonna have a reward. You go into the chest in the pump control station, you're gonna find a legendary in there. I happen to get a piece of legendary armor that actually fit the mood of the vault really well. It was exterminators with 25% resistance to environmental disease. It just seemed like it was too perfect in order to actually, you know, be anything other than something that's predetermined inside the vault. It's like they gave you gear in order to help prepare you for doing the vault again. Kind of like how you get prime receivers from the Scorch Beast Queen to help you kill the Scorch Beast Queen later. But even after you loot the chest, you're gonna have to activate the flood control procedure because that is what seals the deal and helps you complete the raid. Congratulations my friend, you have just completed the raid, you got Vault 94 steel for it, improved repair kits, some power armor plants if you're doing it in standard or expert difficulty, which the only difference between those two difficulties and the novice one is the rewards at the end and also the time limit that you have throughout. But make sure to master it in novice first before you complete it. Anyways. That's going to be it for the video, guys. Hope all of you guys enjoy the video. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe if you enjoy it, and have a good day.